Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today are Kip Praisman and Brian Heidhouse from Feralia. Welcome, Kip and Brian. Hi, Grace. Hey, Grace. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us on the show. Being on the show. So tell us about how you guys got started. Uh, well, it was uh, over eight years ago. I moved out to Hawaii and uh, I had been thinking about starting a pizzeria and uh, it was a transitionary period in my life. And so I decided to do it out here. Um, and I found a, a mobile pizza oven, a wood fired oven. I, I went out to California, I shipped it over here and and I just started, you know, bootstrapped from the beginning, just uh, setting up on the side of the road and, and making pizzas. And what were you guys called before? You guys were called something else, correct? Correct. Uh, the original uh, business was called What It Do. That's yeah. So how did you come up with that name and why did you switch it to for, for <laughs> Um, hey, you know, it was kind of a silly name my friend came up with that I, I liked and, um, you know, we, it, it had kind of run its course. I wanted to do a, a new uh, iteration of the business and kind of, uh, you know, elevate the concept a bit. So that's, that's why we changed it. Nice. So um, how did you get involved, Brian? Well, uh, actually, through a friend, uh, I, I was introduced to this pizza. So, uh, so Kip was making, at the time, I think it was at a Jefferson Elementary, at a farmer's market. Uh, and a friend of mine was so excited about what they were making. She said, you have to try this vegan pizza that they're making. It's like a little wood-fired oven, and then they can tow it around. And like, yeah, so a, a, a group of us were, went there, and I just, like, as soon as I tried it, I was pretty much hooked uh, on this. Just some, It's like vegan pizza like I never had before. So, um, yeah, I was just, as soon as I, I tried it, I thought, like, this is amazing. Like, I wonder, you know maybe someday I'll be able to help out. Uh, and I just, I, you know, for a long time, I was just a customer, kind of a regular customer. And then uh, at some point, uh, there were some opportunities for me to start helping. And I, I started helping, I think that was around maybe six or more years ago. Um, and I think like, yeah, about on and off since then. Uh, and yeah, recently now, much more. So, so, so. so why, uh, why pizza, guys? Like, you know, I mean, there's so many other types of food. Why pizza? Well, uh, I'm from New York originally, so I grew up eating a lot of great pizza, and um, it's probably the most universally loved food, perhaps. Um, I always just had had a real love for it myself, and um, you know, I just became a hobby that uh, became an obsession, and uh, it just snowballed from there for me. So, tell us um, about how you make your cheeses. Uh, so the cheeses, we have um, four different types. Um, we always have four different types, and sometimes we do some specialty ones, but um, uh, the different processes for each one. Our mozzarella is um, it's a bean-based cheese. So we use uh, uh, cannellini beans, uh, and then we add a certain amount of fat, oil, uh, some starches, and gelling agents and um we actually recently just uh changed how we do our mozzarella it's now um goes on to the pizzas as a liquid and uh and you may have seen uh, miyoko uh you know a famous uh vegan cheese maker she has a liquid mozzarella that's sold in stores and that's that's kind of what we we've realized works best for our pizzas too so we put it on the pizzas as a liquid and uh, it goes into the oven and it gels in the in the oven um, and then we have our soft soft cheeses our ricotta and our uh, goat style cheeses which are made from nuts um and you know different flavors and uh we have the goat cheese which is a culture cheese that ferments naturally uh, and then we also do a, a Parmesan cheese, which uh, we sprinkle on a lot of the pizza, and that's made from uh, almonds, actually. So, Brian, uh, you were saying that you guys develop your own cheeses, or is there, do you guys mostly follow Miyoko's or kind of offshoot from her book? 
Uh, no, I think it's it's there's kind of a huge breadth of different like vegan cheese recipes that uh, Kip had tested in the kind of the creation of the business um, when he decided to start making vegan pizzas. So yeah, um, there's definitely inspiration, you know, from the the greater community of uh, vegan vegan creators in the last you know decades. Um, Miyoko's is definitely a huge one of our our inspirations, I would say. Um, but yeah, they, they've kind of been all tested in our kitchen. Um, perfected to what we're looking for. Uh, yeah, I guess like one of the things I wanted to note that's, that's pretty exciting about uh, what we're doing is is just taking basically just taking the animal project out of out of the cheese and and still continuing kind of using these uh, these traditions of, of like fermentation or or at least in some of our cheeses we use like a, a coconut yogurt so it's it's like already a fermented product that goes into it. Um, so that's one of the ways that we're able to get some of these traditional flavors, but you know, without using dairy. I think it's very interesting. You guys have been able to use beans in your cheese. Was that an idea you saw from a YouTube channel or was that from Miyoko's? Um, yeah, I think I saw another, uh, uh, vegan food person you do something like that you know years ago maybe on youtube actually how about the cheesecake what do you guys use for the cheesecake oh thanks thanks for asking we have like one of the world's probably the world's best vegan cheesecake that give again like how did you how did you go with that recipe um so that was uh i we were experimenting with uh making a a cream cheese actually and uh, we developed this cream cheese recipe, um, which is uh, a cultured cream cheese, uh, which we use uh, rejuvelac in, which is uh, the, it's a fermented liquid. Uh, it's the byproduct of actually sprouting um, uh, wheat berries. Uh, it's, and it's a really amazing, busy liquid that uh, has a, a very distinct flavor um, naturally, uh, and you can add it to. We add it to this this um, cheese uh, this cheese mix. It ferments and it becomes this amazing cream cheese that honestly tastes better than than Philadelphia cream cheese, in my opinion. So then it kind of just made sense to make a cheesecake with this, um, and so I just started experimenting. We were making a Basque style cheesecake, which has become popular in recent years. Uh, which is like a burnt, you know, caramelized cheesecake. Um, and then I kind of just evolved it into a, a New York style cheesecake, which we do different fruit toppings and we make our own uh, coconut whip uh, in house. Nice, nice. So tell yeah, us. Wait, I have to actually check it in the oven because I got one. Okay, yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. That's we'll it. talk to Brian a little bit. Uh, Brian, why don't you tell us about your vegan journey? Oh, yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so for me, uh, it started uh, it started like as just a uh, time when I, I was just learning a lot. I think I was around 20 years old. Um, started to, I guess I would say the standard American diet was starting to catch up with me um, in a sense. And I, I started to, you know, when you're like no longer an adolescent, I guess you're, you know, your uh, uh, metabolism starts to change. I, I was just recognizing the effects of, of the standard American lifestyle or standard American diet. Um, for the kind of the first time, I think when I was growing up, I used to eat like all kinds, just thinking back like of, of really heavy grease and stuff. So, um, and so, yeah, I think when I started recognizing it was, it was catching up for me, I was like looking for alternatives. Um, and I did some reading when I stumbled on this whole, um, uh, blog actually about like a, a vegan plant-based diet um eventually like i kind of had you know the, the, a lot of kind of brainwashing i would say or programming <laughs> I had to kind of i had to sort of break through it just to to give it a chance so um I, I realized like hey maybe if i just try this you know for for a short amount of time like i'll, I'll probably be, be able to survive without meat and dairy you know for for like 30 days as an example so as soon as i tried it though like i instantly just felt so much healthier uh and and right right away i just started doing more research and um I, that's when kind of the whole you know world of like 
understanding the, the, the reasons behind a plant-based diet or a vegan diet kind of just started opening up. I, I learned about factory farming, realized that if I didn't have to support that, then, then why would I, you know, how could I ever choose to support that? So yeah, that's, that's kind of how it started for me. That was wow. some time ago. <laughs> how about you, Kip? What's your story? Um, how my vegan uh, journey? Yes. Uh, so I, when I moved to Hawaii, I became a vegetarian for no real great reason. Uh, <laughs> so the business was actually uh, vegetarian. Uh, and then we started to get some customers asking for vegan options and, uh, started researching some vegan recipes that led to um, watching some documentaries, uh, specifically Cowspiracy and then Earthlings, and watching Earthlings, I became a vegan that day, and uh, yeah, that was it. The business, the business uh, followed right along. Mm -hmm. How about your guys' uh, customers? Are they all vegan, or there must be some carnivore customers or omnivores that are, you know, because you can't really tell when you eat the pizza, you can't really tell the cheese isn't necessarily real cheese. Yeah, it's very true. We uh, we don't really, um, you know, advertise that too much that everything's vegan. It's not, you know, plastered on the walls. So uh, I I kind of like to keep it more, you know, subtle as far as what we're doing because I think that is the case. I think we have a lot of customers uh, that come in that are not vegan that don't even necessarily know what we're doing is vegan. And they try it, and then they're amazed when they find out. Mostly, occasionally, uh, some people feel like, you know, we've uh, pulled one over on them. But uh, generally, people are astounded by by the fact that it is vegan if they didn't if they didn't know that. And I think our customer base is is actually largely not vegan. Uh, I'd say more more than fifty percent certainly are not are not vegan. So show us some pictures, Michael, of the pizza. Oh, thanks, yeah. Well, this is where your restaurant is, the outside seating area. Yeah, we have like some alfresco dining. Yeah. We have, and now we have, it's about six months ago, uh, this is the build out continues. We have an indoor dining area. Um, we have a bar, which we're waiting on with kind of a liquor, license. liquor license. Right. Yeah. Wow. And so, but yeah, right now we have this whole outdoor seating. That's a, uh, the next, yeah, the next slide there is, uh, Kip, you want to talk a little bit about the oven? It's, it's a pretty well-known. Yeah, it's a, it's a great oven built in Italy. It's, it is a Valoriani. Um, it's made in Florence, and um, it's one of the, the real uh, industry preferred ovens for this style of pizza, for Napolitana uh, pizza. Um, and, yeah, it's a, it's a great oven. We get it. Super hot. It bakes a pizza in uh, under ninety seconds, which is a lot. Wow. What makes uh, this style of pizza so special? It's not. It's not um, a crispy pizza that people are, you know, an American style pizza, which is uh, more crispy. Um, this style of pizza, when done right, is actually a uh, a softer, chewier um, product. Uh, it's soft but crunchy. So when you're making the pizza, are you, uh, you know how they toss up the pizza in the pizza place like this? Or no, not quite. It's a different kind of pizza? <laughs> yeah, it's a different kind of pizza, different kind of dough. Um, you know, you, you can do a little bit of that, but, but we don't really uh, go crazy. The, the pizza acrobatics, as it's called. Yeah, it's, I've always enjoyed the pizza acrobatics. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Also, we don't really have the room where we, we stretch. Oh, yeah. You can perform, do the performances. It's very low. So, yeah. um, you know, I've seen some stuff online where you can get mobile pizza ovens. So what makes, you know, one pizza oven different from another, you know? This is just made in Italy at a special place, like, I guess. Well, yeah, there are there are some pretty cool um, ones for people to kind of experiment in their backyard, and you can make like yeah, a, yeah. I was thinking of getting one. I'm like, ah, oh, backyard pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be a great thing, uh, and and it's fun for people to kind of play around with that. Um, you know, I guess the big difference this one is that it's uh, 
much larger you can you know we can use it like to cook quite a few pizzas at a time something that we have talked about a possible way to expand at some point you know like further on down the road we might be able to do catering events with some of those smaller ovens like that um because this oven was you know it was mobile but now it's, it's basically kind of fixed in our in our brick and mortar oh so no it's no longer mobile i was going to ask you if it's still mobile but no longer yeah no not it's still no. technically on wheels but uh <laughs> mm-hmm. it would be difficult <laughs> out of where we have it now yeah, yeah. So you guys had a time period where you were doing a lot of different places, right? There was first you were alongside, you know, just kind of at the farmer's market. And then you were, do we want to explain that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were just trying to find a home. Uh, first, we actually just started right on the side of the road on the North Shore, right by, by uh, Aokai Beach Park. And uh, then we started doing farmers markets in town, uh, Jefferson Elementary School. Um, and, you know, we set up in different spots, Kakua Market, and uh, we were at a place not far from here in Kakaako, actually, called The Cut um, for a while. And then we found um, our spot that became our home for a couple of years in the Banan um, lot over on Montserrat by Diamond Head. Uh, and that was a great home and helped us grow for uh, about two years before we found this spot. Of course, pandemic uh, nice. in the meantime. Didn't you, weren't you also at I Love Nala's during the pandemic? Right. Yeah, uh, it was before, before pandemic. Yeah. Before uh, pandemic? Okay. It was only yeah. for a few months. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. We worked it up over there as well. It was an interesting, yeah, that was an interesting one because being being over there, there were a lot of people that lived closer to there that, that really loved it. And then, of course, everyone in town was not happy with that location as much. So so now that uh, then once we came back to like the town side, a lot of a lot of the people over here were pretty excited. Nice. Uh, nice. That's cool. So what do you envision for the future? Are you going to have more different dishes? branch out a little bit or di- different kinds of pizzas yeah uh, well i'd say i'll start at, start off like first of all we have uh done there's been quite of an evolution already like like with like adding uh the cannolis these another oh, yeah, those uh, are delicious you yeah, want to those? yeah another you amazing vegan creation um so right now we regularly we have chocolate chip and pistachio options sometimes we have a special one um again the cheesecake like we talked about earlier Kip um, has perfected this this amazing Caesar salad. Actually, it's it's uh, become very popular here. Um, and then there's also this meatball. It's another very, like super popular starter that we have. And then yeah, we we normally have like a special pizza, which people really look forward to. It would be like once a month. Um, and then yeah, Kip, do you want to talk about like what's what's coming up? Yeah, next? we're definitely going to add some more things to the menu, some more um, starters and desserts. We're going to be adding saucer of ice cream. Oh, uh, that's very soon, yeah. Which what's be- that? What's going to be the base of that? Um, it's an oat milk base. Okay, nice. Yeah, and then uh, we're going to bring in coffee, and we're going to do an affogato with that. Uh, so the coffee on top of the soft serve, and uh, I'm also going to add a tiramisu to the menu. Oh, the- wonderful! Tiramisu. Awesome. Yeah, um, and then eventually we're going to do pasta as well. Mm -hmm. So are you Italian or, um, you know, how did the fascination with Italian food come about? I am uh, half Italian. My mother was um, full Italian and uh, she was a great cook. Nice. Um, I got a chance to actually go to Italy over over the pandemic and uh, explore a bit. And eat a lot of great food and uh yeah I've, I've always loved the culture and the cuisine and um i i you know i really want to create uh vegan versions of, of these dishes that that so many people love including myself yeah i mean i am really interested in what you put in the cannolis like that cream in the center what is that made from so that is a combination of our um our almond based ricotta and uh, I then I make a uh, a cashew based custard actually, and I mix those two together. Nice, nice. It looks absolutely delicious. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there's other Italian treats too. I can't remember what they are. They're little lace cookies. I really like those. Lace cookies. The no. How do you I don't remember that? what those are called. They're I mean, really, uh, it's a pizzella, right? Yeah. Oh, the like waffly kind of ones. I think that's yes, what... yes, the waffly ones. Yes. Yeah, Zell. Yeah, yeah, something like. That. Yeah, we were actually those researching cool. that recently. Yeah. yeah, and then those other, um, you know, I know it's probably never going to be gluten free, but they have the, what are the ones where they have chocolate on the t- eclairs, eclairs. Like oh, it. yeah. Well, that's a French dessert. French thing, but yeah, but they have them in the little Italy, like if you go. To yeah, Italy. I love, I love all those custard in the middle. Yeah, those. Uh, Very um, good. And a, you know, I, I would love to create more stuff like that. There's a, a Neapolitan dessert called sfogliatella, and that's, you know, that's a kind of got a custard in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about y- your location. Like, what, where is the location right now, and what are your hours so people can know where to find you? Sure. Um, well, we have a great location. It's right uh, really in the urban core of Honolulu, um, right by Blaisdell, uh, in Kaka'ako. We're, um, on, uh, the, should I tell you the address? It's 1124 Kona Street, okay. right off of Kapiolani, right behind, uh, McKinley Car Wash. Nice. And, uh, we're open Friday through Sunday right now, uh, 4.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, we're hopefully going to expand our hours soon. We'd like to get to Wednesday, at least a Wednesday to Sunday schedule. And as soon as we get the bar open, we'll also be open later. So are you just limited by staffing right now? Is that why the only the weekend hours? Yeah, that's part of it. Um, we had opened on Thursday um, in fall of last year. and. Uh, you know, I, I, it was maybe just a timing thing, but it wasn't, it, it was not a very busy day for us. So I decided to close back down, but I think we're in a good place now to, to open back up more once we get our staffing. Um, sorted. So is it, um, has it been difficult? I know over the years you were mobile for a while and I, I know with the mobile costs is probably less than having a brick and mortar place. Um, is it difficult to try to, I mean, I'm assuming now with the brick and mortar, you're paying rent like seven days a week, you know, it's not like it's only four days a week. Um, yeah. Is that, you know, part of your motivation or? Yeah, it's a challenge. And it, it also, yeah, we're, you know, I, I rent this place seven days a week. So, uh, you know, it would make sense to be open more. Um, you know, it's just logistics and the overhead uh, as far as labor, right? Uh, to, to just figure out how to do it, um, where it works out. Um, but yeah, uh, trying to create a full fledged, uh, brick and mortar restaurant, uh, the overhead is, you know, it's it's more challenging. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I know what I, I know, I think there's one of those pop-ups and you know, sometimes they rent it to other people, so you could potentially rent it to another vegan um, pop on, kind of on other days, and then you could collect rent from them if you didn't have the staffing yet. You know, that would be a potential idea. Like, there's those other ones like Honobono, and, you know, they're just pop-ups, but I think they do very well on those pop-up days, and then yeah. happy to have, you know, I, I'm not sure about Honobono, but other places might be happy to have like a vegan kitchen, you know, because yeah, sure. yeah. certified sure. kitchen, right? Yeah. So if you're out there watching and you're a vegan chef or a vegan restaurant uh, pop-up runner, like uh, please get into, yeah, feel free to get in touch um, yeah. to, to talk. We'd love to talk more about that. That's actually a great idea. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like that's a perfect opportunity for somebody else who might be trying to get started just like you guys were, you know? I mean, it was been a long journey, you know, till I don't, how long have you had the brick and mortar open now? Um, so about, let's see. Uh, I mean, I've been in this location for over three years, but it's, you know, it was kind of even a pop up here for a while. So, uh, you know, I've, about two years, uh-huh. coming up on two years uh-huh. this summer, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely other people who, you know, they, it's difficult. 
It's really difficult. The yeah, it's a very business. hard time for the restaurant business in general, uh, is my understanding. Uh, it certainly seems that way. Also, lots of lots of places closing down everywhere, including lots of vegan places. Unfortunately, um, you know, I think it's it's already a challenging business, and and given uh, the economic climate and the cost of goods, it's it's just it's extra challenging. Yeah, and where do you guys get your goods from? A uh, number of different places, you know, big food distributors, Costco, but we also try and source as much as we can locally. Uh, you know, we get all our basil from a farm on the west side, and we're working on developing more relationships with uh, local uh, food producers uh, and farms. Yeah, I mean, I guess it must be challenging sometimes because you want to buy the best materials, but it is also an expense issue, right? You know, you want to buy organic, but you know, it's more expensive the more organic things you buy. And it shouldn't be like that. You know, there should be a cost. There's It's a cost to in the environment when people are using pesticides. But, you know, somehow, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's cheaper to buy things with pesticides on them. And it shouldn't be. Well, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. One, of the, one of the things we're excited about is, uh, is the, that basically, like, the food that we're creating, uh, doesn't like we said like we talked about earlier it's like doesn't necessarily um have to be like just great vegan food it's just great italian style food so that's that's one of the um, kind of the things we're like highlighting here is it's creating a, just amazing food and then oh and by the way like we've taken all the animal products out of it so mm -hmm. kind of trying to open people's minds you know to that to that concept through through these things like pizza like it's uh something that a lot of times people like I even I've heard people say like oh I could like you know I could never go vegan because I can't give up cheese right or I couldn't give up pizza so um that's one of the ideas we have here definitely we're we're super grateful for for our customers and like how excited they are about about the products we're making oh absolutely do you guys have any takeaways for our viewers yeah we'll come down and like please uh bring your friends or your family uh and try try out the restaurant come you know you can come sit outside it's currently BYOB um we're here like it's a great weekend spot yeah. wonderful well thank you guys so much we have to wrap it up I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill this is Healthy Planet on Think Tech Hawaii we've been talking with Brian and Kip about Feralia if you enjoyed the coverage and the conversation please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great content on Think Tech this is unfortunately our last recording of Healthy Planet as Think Tech is not recording new shows after April. However, Think Tech will be still maintaining their YouTube channel and website for you to browse past shows. So please keep caring about your health, the environment, and the other creatures on this planet. What we do makes a difference on planet Earth. Check out my future projects at graceandhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365. Thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, Please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.